In this video, we're going to learn about do while loops in C++. So do while loops are one of several loop control structures that are available in C++ that allow us to execute a block of code multiple times. So for example, we can declare an int variable called i and initialize i to zero. Then we could have a do while loop. So we'll have do and then an open squiggly bracket and a close squiggly bracket. That's going to be the loop body. Then we'll have while, and inside the brackets here, we'll have i is less than three. This is called the loop condition. And then we need to have a semicolon here. So the way this loop is going to work is that the loop body is going to execute at least once, no matter what. And that's kind of the defining feature of the do while loop is that no matter what, the loop body is going to execute at least once. Then this condition here is going to be evaluated. If it's true, the loop body is going to execute again, and the condition will again be evaluated. Eventually, when this condition evaluates the false, the loop is going to stop, and execution is going to jump below the loop. Just to make it clear when that's happened, let's actually output down here, loop done, followed by an inline, just so we can explicitly see when the loop has ended. Now we could put some statements in our loop body to make it more interesting. What we'll do is output the value of i, and then we'll also increment i by one. So the way this is going to work is that i is going to be initialized to zero. Then the loop body is going to be executed, and it's going to be executed the first time regardless of the condition here. We're going to output that i is zero, then we're going to increment i by one. Then this condition will be evaluated to determine whether the loop body should execute again or not. At this point, i will be one, and one is less than three. So the condition is true. That means the loop body is going to execute again. We'll output that i is one and increment i again, and now i will be two. Again, two is less than three. So the condition is going to be true and the loop body is going to execute again. This time, we'll output that i is two, we will increment i by one, i will now be three. This time, the condition is going to be false because three is not less than three. Three is equal to three. So at this point, the loop will stop and then we'll output loop done. So if we save, compile, and run a program, we can see that we get i is zero, i is one, i is two, and then loop done. So the loop does stop once i reaches three. We call a variable like i a counter variable because i is helping us to count and manage the number of times that the loop body is going to execute. So probably the most important thing that distinguishes a do while loop from other types of loops like a while loop is that the loop body is going to execute once no matter what. So here, if we initialize i to 10, 10 is not less than three. This condition will be false. But if we save, compile, and run the program, we're going to get that i is 10. The loop body does execute once. So no matter what, with a do while loop, the loop body is going to execute at least once. And that's in contrast to other loops, like for example, a while loop. Let's change this to a while loop. We'll delete this, and then up at the top, instead of do, we'll have while i is less than three. So a while loop is another type of loop control structure in C++, but with a while loop, the condition here is first going to be evaluated before the loop body executes. So if this condition is false, the loop body is never going to execute. In this case here, 10 is not less than three. The condition is false, and therefore the loop body is never going to run. If we save, compile, and run this program, all we get is loop done. The loop body never executes, not even once. So that's the defining feature of a do while loop. With a do while loop, the loop body is going to execute at least once, no matter what. Let's change this back to a do while loop. And then let's go over the keywords break and continue. So the keywords break and continue allow us to alter the normal control flow of a loop. So normally a loop is going to continue until this condition is false. With break, 
we can stop the loop early. So what we could have here is if i is equal to one break. The way this works is that break, when it's executed, is going to stop the loop. Execution is going to jump below the loop once break is encountered. So what we're doing here is checking if i is equal to one. If i is equal to one, we're going to stop the loop early with break. Now we'll also switch back to initializing i with the value zero. So that way the loop behavior that we would expect normally is to have i go from zero to one to two before the loop stops when i reaches three. But having this condition here, if i is equal to one, and then breaking when it's true, is going to alter that behavior. So we'll save, compile, and run the program. And now we'll get i is zero, i is one, and then loop done. So what happens here is that as before, the first time the loop body executes, i is zero. So we're going to output i is zero. Then we're going to check if i is equal to one. It's not, so nothing is going to happen. We're going to increment i by one. i is now one. One is less than three, and the loop is going to continue. We'll output that i is one. This time though, we're going to check if i is equal to one, and it's going to be true. So we're going to break and that is going to stop the execution of the loop right here. So you can use break to stop the execution of a loop early. There's also a keyword called continue, and what continue is going to do is skip over the remainder of the loop body. So we could have this. If i is equal to zero, then we're going to increment i by two. We'll have i plus equals two to increment i by two, and then we'll have continue here. So the way this is going to work is that when the loop is first encountered, i is going to be zero. So we're going to output that i is zero. Then we're going to check if i is equal to zero. It is, so we're going to increment i by two. i will now be two. Now, if we didn't have continue here, what would normally occur is that the rest of the loop body would continue to execute. We would increment i by one. i would now be three. Three would not be less than three, and the loop would stop. But instead, we have continue here. So after we've incremented i and i is two, continue is going to skip over the remainder of the loop body. We're going to jump directly to checking the condition. We'll see that i being two is less than three, and the loop body will continue to execute. We'll output that i is two. This time though, i is not going to equal zero because i is two. We'll increment i by one, three is not less than three, and the loop will stop. Let's save, compile, and run our program. And we can see that we get i is zero, and then i is two, and then loop done. So that's exactly what we expected to happen. So we can use the continue keyword to skip over the remainder of a loop body. Now using the break and continue keywords can sometimes make a loop more difficult to understand. That doesn't mean we shouldn't use them, but we should be aware of that and be a little bit careful about when and how we use them. Let's reduce our loop back to this. Let's say that we forgot to increment i. So in the loop, let's say that we didn't increment i. What would happen here is that i would be initialized to zero, we would output the i zero in the loop body, and we would check to see if i is less than three. Zero is less than three, and the loop would execute again. But the loop body would never modify i, so this condition would just continue to be true, forever and ever. We call the situation an infinite loop. So if I save, compile, and run the program, we're going to get i is zero, forever and ever. Eventually, our program may even crash. And that's called an infinite loop. And typically, an infinite loop is not created on purpose. Typically, it's a bug that we need to look out for. In comparison to other types of loops, do while loops are going to be useful in situations where we need to do something at least once. An example of this would be user input validation. So let's say for example, that we want the user to input a valid month between one to 12. We know that at least once, we need to ask the user to input a month. But if the user does enter an invalid month, we're going to want to ask the user to enter in the month again and again until they do enter in a valid month. So that's an example of a situation where we need to do something at least once 
but potentially more times. Let's actually write the code for this. We'll have a variable called month, and what we'll do is prompt the user to enter in the month. So we'll have month, and then one to 12, and colon. Then we'll take the month that the user enters, and we'll store it into the month variable. Then we'll modify the condition here to continue the loop so long as the month entered is out of range. So we'll have while the month is less than one or the month is greater than 12, the loop is going to continue. So the month is out of range if it's less than one or it's greater than 12. So that's why we have exactly that condition here. So we could save, compile and run the program. And if I enter in a month of 13 or zero or negative five, we just keep getting asked for the month until I enter in a valid month, like let's say five, then the loop stops. But no matter what, we're asking the user at least once to enter in a month. So that's an example of a situation where a do while loop is going to be ideal. Now, unlike our earlier examples, this loop does not really use a counter variable we also don't really know how many times this loop is going to execute when it begins to execute. This situation where we don't know how many times a loop is going to execute when it begins to execute is called an indefinite loop because it's going to execute an indefinite number of times. So this is how we can use do while loops in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.